checks the error activity out. If you did not if you did not submit the homework assignment yesterday, now, now please put it in the middle of the table. So things that you need to know. Number one, there is a unit test tomorrow. I am sure by the looks on your faces and how reluctant some of you are to step into the room, you knew that already, that there is the unit test tomorrow. Okay, things that you may not know is I am going to get that sucker graded tomorrow. If we turn that off, that would be great. Um, Saturday at the absolute latest, I will set the cut scores and those grades will be locked in for the first six weeks. So by the end of this weekend, you will know with 100% certainty what your grade is for the six weeks. I will send you an email when that grade is locked in. BC folks, same. Everybody will know. All right. Uh, after class is over, I'm going to send you my worked out solutions for this spot and fix the error activity that you guys started on yesterday, plus some additional review questions that are in your unit packet that we're going to work on today. Those two things that I'm going to send you are going to be excellent preparation for tomorrow's test. It would be a great way for you to study is to work through additional questions and get some support. Um, it is my understanding that there's one, two, three people that are going to be absent tomorrow for college visits and other such things. Okay, thank you to those three people for letting me know in advance. Anybody else, if you for some reason are going to be absent tomorrow during my test, I mean, we need to talk. We need to talk. Please, if you are somehow compelled to have a college meeting with your college counselor tomorrow during this time, let them know that would not be a good choice because I do not have the capacity to give you more time. If you're late to class tomorrow, you don't get the full time and there's not an opportunity to make this up. Last thing you need to know is that I am not available today during lunch. Uh, Northside has changed their Thursday schedule a little bit, which means I need to get there earlier than I normally do on Thursdays. Sorry. With all that said, though, that means we need to make the absolute most that we can of this period. Everybody good? All right. So homework is in the middle of the table. If I could get you guys to go on over to page 48. Page 48 has some recommendations for how you should spend time studying tonight. Now in an ideal world, you would not have waited until tonight to start the studying process. There is a whole lot of research out there that says what smart successful people do is they like study one night and then they take a night off and they study again another night and they take some time off and then they study again. And the spacing of the studying is so much better than the person who crams. Where are my crammers? Where are the folks that are like, I'm going to go home tonight, I'm going to take a little nap, and I'm going to fill up on sugar. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that is such a bad idea. That may be what has worked for you in the past, and I hope, if, I hope it's going to work for you tomorrow. But the smart people are the ones that have been studying in little dribs and drabs all along making corrections to quizzes, coming in for tutorials, getting some support. These are all really good things to do. But for the crammers, let's talk, shall we? Karina, if I write over here, can everybody see? One of the big things that's going to be on there tomorrow is limits. Limits, 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 limits. And the thing that you need to know about limits is that in order for a limit to exist, what needs to be true? Limit from the right. Limit from the left. Limit from the left, limit from the right must be equal to each other. A hole in the graph is okay. So make sure that you know your definition of the limits. And then there's going to be stuff that involves algebraic manipulation. Now, you don't always have to do algebraic manipulation, but a sign that you're going to do algebraic manipulation is you try plugging in, you get 0 over 0. We're going to do things like factor and cancel. We're going to do things like multiply by the conjugate. We're going to do things like get a common denominator. These are things that we do. You might have to evaluate limits on the graph and calculator. 
right, where you build a table of values and you see what happens as I get close from the left, what happens as I get close to the right. Graphical analysis is another thing. Let me give you guys an example there. For example, if I said, what's the limit as x approaches infinity of 12 over 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x? Oh, no. Yes, have a quick conversation with somebody near you while I take attendance. What's that limit going to be and why? What are you going to discuss? It's going to go like this, eh? Okay, so it's I've heard 12, I've heard 5, and I've heard 0. Neither of those are the correct answers. The more bad answers are infinity. Well, I listen to you all the time. Stop judging him. Okay, still waiting. Okay, Mario, not here. Paul, not here. Yeah, good for him. Okay. So here's the thing. I have no idea what this graph looks like. I, I, I really don't. Yeah, okay, maybe I do. Okay. You don't need to know what the whole graph looks like if you understand the pieces. And the piece that you need to understand is right over here, this e to the negative 2x. And you need to ask yourself, self, as x approaches infinity, what happens to the graph of e to the negative 2x? Can you guys all draw that in the air for me? e to the negative 2x, what does that look like? Looks like this, right? Decreasing from left to right. So what happens? What am I approaching? You're approaching zero. This part over here approaches zero. Now you know the complete story. If this part's approaching zero, what's the whole denominator doing? Zero. zero. Mm -mm, not zero. Oh, this one. part is approaching zero. And then I multiply by five, so still zero. approaching zero. Add one. Oh, I'm approaching one. The numerator is 12. The denominator is approaching one. Your final answer is 12. That this has to do with all those parent functions. You must know your parent functions. Okay. You also need to know growth rates. Growth rates. Okay, the slowest growing function out there is the natural log function. That is the slog function. It's so slow. After that, we look at the world of the polynomials. With polynomials, not too bad. We just look at degree, right? The bigger the degree, the faster it grows. After the polynomials, we hit the exponentials. Exponentials grow fast. The bigger the base, the faster it grows. So really quick, if I said, hey friends, what's the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the 2x over, oh, I don't know, x to the 100th power <laughs> plus 2x. Talk to somebody near you about that real quick. What's that limit going to be? Limit as x approaches infinity e to the 2x over x to the 100 plus 2x. Oh, you want to have some conversations with somebody near you. This would, should be a quick question. And I'm taking the limit as x approaches infinity. The conversation I want to have is which one grows faster? The exponential grows faster. If this guy grows faster, what happens? We're going to approach infinity. Done. Done, 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 done. Now let's mess you up a little bit. Limit as x approaches infinity, e to the x plus 2 over 3 to the x minus 5. Talk to somebody near you, see what you can do. This is going to be zero. Adrian, Karina, 
Alright friends, here we go. Limit is X approach to infinity, e to the X plus 2 over 3 to the X minus 5. Which one grows faster? So, bottom one. Which one grows faster? 3x. The tricky part is, they're both exponential. Right? And so they both grow fast, but which one grows faster? They don't grow at the same rate. The issue here is this, which one has the bigger base? The thing that you need to know about E is that E is like 2.7 and some change. It's like 2.718. The base here is 3. This guy grows faster. As soon as you know that this guy grows faster, guess what? The whole limit is going to be 0. Okay? So those are some of the ways that we evaluate limits. After we talked about limits, we moved into the world of continuity. Continuity is going to be assessed on both the multiple choice and the free response portions of the exam, and you need to be ready. Three-step process, if F is going to be continuous at C, F of C exists. Limit as X approaches C exists, and F of C is equal to the limit as X approaches C. Got to have all three of those. Have to show me all three. All three have to be true if the function is going to be continuous. Once you've got continuity, you can look at our friend, the intermediate value theorem. And we're going to get some practice with the intermediate value theorem in just a little bit. The intermediate value theorem, that was the graph that says things like, the theorem that says like, hey, I've got a point up here. I've got a point over here. Does the graph have to have a y value equal to some number m? And this is my value of m. Does there have to be a place somewhere in between these two points where the function crosses this horizontal line? Yes. yes. I heard a lot of yeses. I mean, it's, 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 it's. What was that, Henry? Huh? You just said something really important. Or maybe it wasn't Henry? It's, it's, it's continuous. Yeah, I'm sorry. You said it. I stopped listening. At the I mean, it, uh, it has to be continuous. You still said it. Oh. What well, has to be continuous? The function. The function. Oh. If f is continuous. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be continuous everywhere, but if it's continuous on this interval a, b, then Jeanette, there's the only way, even though I could draw lots of different functions that get me from here to here, they all have to pass this line. And m is between f of a and f of b. Okay, that, that's the intermediate value theorem. You're going to have to write it. You're going to have to do a justification. We got some practice yesterday. Things should be good. You're also going to have to do some work with asymptotes. Okay? Asymptotes. I say horizontal asymptote. You best be thinking limit as x approaches infinity of f of x and limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. Whatever you get as the number, if, I, if you get like the limit is 5, guess what? If the limit as x approaches infinity is 5, no. It just means you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5. This is saying that the graph is getting closer to the line y equals 5. That's what it means to be an asymptote. But what if I take the limit here and I get infinity? As I head off towards negative infinity, the y values are approaching infinity. What's the conclusion there? You take that limit as x approaches negative infinity, and the y values are approaching infinity? It's not that the limit doesn't exist. There is no horizontal asymptote, because your values are just growing, so there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay. In the world of vertical asymptotes, and this is where you've got to be careful, you set the denominator equal to zero. 
denominator equal to zero, then check the limit. You gotta be super careful. Just setting the denominator equal to zero says you have a candidate, but it doesn't have to be an asymptote, it could be a whole. Karina. Uh, realizing the homework, it says like how to find the horizontal asymptote but the tangent line. How do yep. you do that? The hor no, it wasn't horizontal asymptote, it was horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line just means the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got limits, we've got continuity, we got the IVT, we got some asymptotes. The last thing is going to be the derivative. And in the world of the derivative, our friend mm tan, mm tan at x equals a, three formulas that you need to know. You need to know all three. There's one of them that I am confident everybody and their mama knows. If Henry, what you got? Uh, f of x minus f of x1 uh, over, over x minus x2. Okay, you're using a slightly different letter than I thought you were going to do. Okay. It's usually f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Yeah. But that's not slope of tangent line. This is not slope of tangent line. One person knows. Oh. Two people know. Three people. Jackie, why is this not slope of tangent line? Because you have to put it lim and then x as x approaches a. It's the limit, Henry, as x approaches a. What you gave me was actually slope of secant line, not slope of tangent line. If you use this tomorrow, Michelle, this is going to tell me the slope of the tangent line at one. Pause here. One little point. The other version that you get and I'm going to leave these all up here, is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. That is also slope of the line at one point. At one point. At one point. The last one is if you want to find the slope of the tangent line at all points, f prime as a function, a function of x. That's the one I think some of you were trying to tell me earlier. Limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Done. These are all the things. These are all the big ideas coming tomorrow. And we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Yes, I would not lie to you all. <laughs> all right, so with that said, Paul, don't worry. I'm going to leave this all up here for you. Okay. All right, if you guys could take out that spot to fix the error activity that was started on yesterday. Everybody should be back in their, their groups. Every group has an expert, somebody who really knows what the heck they're doing. Okay, here are the priority questions for the next 15 minutes. Question number one, which involves the intermediate value theorem. Question number three, which involves instantaneous rate of change. Question number four, that involves the derivatives. All the conversations that are going to happen in this room for the next 15 minutes are about one, three, and four. Uh, raise your hand if you were the expert for question one. Okay, if friends in your group are struggling with the IVT question, go to the person that just raised their hand. Who's Question three masters. That was the instantaneous rate of change. We've got Paul, we've got Daisy, we've got Jackie. There should be more. Uh, okay, Sylvia, maybe they are out. Maybe they're out today. And question four, where are the masters for that? Okay, one, three, and four. I really need you guys to make sure everybody is good. IVT, instantaneous rate of change, derivative, big money. Question two, go back to that last if you have time. You've only got 15 minutes to make the most out of this time. I missed you.
find the equation of the tangent lines of some preferred. I say that x equals 2, you know the x value, you get the y value by plugging in x. That gets you the point. So, for response number one, the problem was that they did a put in slow things from x first to 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 now you have to x equals 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 Everywhere there was an x. Plug in x plus h. If you're not done, you still have to multiply it out in the box and the stuff. Okay. 
So, so that's one of the questions one three and four which is excellent oh my god excellent preparation for the free response tomorrow you're gonna to see the free response and be like thank you for this gift thank you for this gift to me mr. DeRosier and I'll really say thank Miss Blakely she did all the work here and then there's the multiple choice and the multiple choice you're gonna to have to work fast you're not gonna think it's a gift it's not so what I want to do is I want to point out a couple of multiple choice questions that would be really good for you to work on in the remaining 15 minutes I'm starting on page 49 I'm just going to put little dots next to them. Number one, two, three, four. Yes, there might be a pattern here. One through four. These are all excellent questions. Um, six and eight. And I'm sending you guys the solutions, not just the answers, but my worked out solutions to these later. Nine and ten, excellent questions to work on. Okay. And because I'm a giver, let's keep the giving coming. Um, I think that's good. Number 13. Number 13. Okay. So for the last 12 minutes of class, I think the smartest thing you could do with your groups is really focus on 1 through 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 13. All the solutions are coming your way later so that you can look at my work and see what the right answer is and go from there. But we've got this time left. Let's use it wisely. These are not easy questions, Adrian. I don't roll that way. I don't roll, period. Well, <laughs> <laughs> 
the first one? Why is it not? Because why equals two? You're asking someone to say why equals two. 
prepared, so thank you for the to be, oh, I'm tempted, but that would be writing on the wall. That would be bad. Number four is A. How many of you guys just got all four of those right? Okay, we got some friends. Three out of four. I can do it three out of four. Okay, we got three minutes. Uh, hold on. One of them I want to talk about is number one. This is what I just saw with the ladies up front. They said, okay, we know we've got an asymptote at y equals 2. We know the function is defined only for 0, at x greater than or equal to 0. And they crossed off a right away, and I think that's pretty pretty obvious, right? You don't have to pass through the point 0, comma 2. But they're getting stuck over here. This says f of x can't be equal to 2. Could I draw a function that has a horizontal asymptote at 2, and it, could I do this? No. It doesn't have to be Adrian, why? One more time. Horizontal asymptotes, it's about the ends. There's no conversation about what happens in the middle. Could this function be the function we're talking about? Yes. yes. So it's too strong to say f of x can't be equal to 2. It can be equal to 2. F of 2 is undefined. That's got nothing to do with nothing. Limit as x approaches 2 is infinity. This is for the kid that's thinking vertical asymptotes. Number 5, limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is 2. That is what it means to be a horizontal asymptote. You're smarter than you look. Nice job. 
x squared minus 4 over x plus 2, and x is not equal to 2, what's f of negative 2? Well, here's what I know. I know that f is continuous at x equals negative 2. And so you might write right away, okay, I need those things. f of negative 2 exists. The limit as x approaches negative 2 exists. Well, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2? Jose, what you got? Um, x minus 2 and x plus 2. Okay, so we can factor the numerator as x minus 2 times x plus 2. And those guys cancel? Yes, sir. What's the limit as x approaches negative 2? Negative 4. Negative 4. The limit is negative 4. And the function has to be continuous. So what's f of negative 2? f of negative 2 has to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x. So it all has to be equal to negative 4. That's what it means to be continuous. The function's value, the limit's value, they're all the same. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Get a good night's sleep. Somebody loves you, it's just not me.